Hey everybody, GL1, and uh, I wanted to do a little bit of an additional introduction to this uh, show here. Uh, what I'm doing all the time is comparing and contrasting the different radio control vehicle technologies, and this show will be no different. So there's going to be several, you know, vehicles, and I'm going to show you how all those technologies are different and similar, and uh, you know, all the little nuances and things like that. So uh, that's always the theme with uh, my show is not just to show you how cool they are, but to show you how different they are and, and how they are designed. And that to me is what makes them interesting and cool. And what you learn or what you can learn with radio control vehicles is how to fix a lot of other things. So if you get the right complement of vehicles, the kind that, you know, maybe models or some inexpensive ones and start taking them apart and learning about how the electronics work, you can fix things that you never thought you could repair. Now, I've been working with RC cars for probably 20 years before I had a client uh, who was a dentist and he had an x-ray machine and the x-ray machine stopped working. Now, they're very expensive. And he asked me, you know, and I'm no x-ray technician, all right? He said, do you think you can fix it? He's like, because otherwise, I just have to spend thousands of dollars to buy another one. So might as well try. Do you think you can do it? And I looked at the problem and I thought to myself, you know, I might be able to. And I'm willing to try. You're willing to try. If I mess up, uh, you know. You're gonna have to buy another one because no one's gonna do to the x-ray machine what I'm willing to do. So just like an RC vehicle where you're willing to cut and put different things in and try and see what works, I took a, a metal saw, I cut into the armature for the x-ray, okay? When you move the x-ray machine to take different pictures of your jaw, it had a joint that spun. Of course, there has to be wires that connect to the x-ray a uh, camera that go through this joint. Well, I theorized, I said, well, if somebody spun it in the same direction too often, the wires might get so tight and tangled, some might snap. So let me cut into the metal of the arm and then check the wires out to see if that's what happened. You know, um, well, that's what happened. I was willing to, I cut an access panel I got in there, I found that, oh my God, there had to be at least 20 wires in there, little tiny thin wires, which I'm used to soldering. And I, they were, fortunately they were color matched. And as I, I was able to separate them and solder them back together and then put the electrical tape around them so that there was, you know, they wouldn't touch each other. And I fixed this x-ray armature and saved him like five or $6,000. So, you know, that's just one example of what you can learn with learning about all the different technologies with radio control cars. So there you go, uh, enjoy. Let's go.
Hello everyone, GL1 here, and welcome to STEM class RC car number four. Uh, I hope you found it a little exciting to see those cars racing around. And today uh, I'm going to go over the, this collection is a little bit different. Uh, they're very different from each other. Uh, there are some unusual things going on. And why did they do this? And why did they do that? And what worked well and what didn't work well? Um, and uh, I've modified uh, some of these vehicles and I'm gonna go through a little bit of the technology on that. So uh, the first car we saw racing around was uh, this one right here, right? And um, it's fast, uh, does not have a lot of torque though. Uh, so it takes a little while to get up to speed and that just would depend on how the gearing is and also how the voltage regulation or the current, uh, how quickly that it's getting the current uh, to, you know, from the battery into the vehicle. And this is where it gets interesting. So um, I have it here. This is one of those Lexan plastic bodies. They're very flexible, very tough. Um, you know, you can run it into things and they, it doesn't uh, cr crack too easily. Uh, because of the flexibility. Uh, they're painted from the inside. So the outside really has nothing on it. So the scratches uh, doesn't scratch the paint off because the paint is on the inside. And uh, so that's kind of a neat idea, you know, to get these Lexan bodies instead of the old hard plastic ones like this. Um, you know, I, I like the old, old, uh, the old hard plastic though, because it's more like a toy, whereas this is sort of more, I don't know, fake fakey thing. Um, this body I had to modify. I had to cut the wheel wells uh, larger because I had to put different tires on this, different wheels on it as well. And let me show you how this car operates. So, all right. So here's the chassis, all right, for this car. And the motor is right up in here. There's uh, the air grill. So in there, the, you know, the cooling effect in there, and it has it on underneath too. So the air goes in, cools the motor down. Um, my guess is that because this is not a high torque car, um, it will um, not require a lot of heat sinks. It's not gonna, it's, it's meant to run longer rather than more torque. Now, um, one of the first things that's really unusual about this car is um, the battery, okay? So let me show you that here. This is a Black & Decker lithium 20 volt drill motor or any other uh, Black & Decker products. You can have, put this 20 volt battery and it locks in right up here. And it has a lever here you can switch it, turn it around, and you see that switches. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can see that. All right, and then those two contacts are for a DeWalt battery. So if you have a DeWalt drill, it'll run on a DeWalt or Black & Decker, or, I'll show you over here, came with kind of a fake DeWalt battery. So this looks like a DeWalt battery. It fits on in the same way. It just connects up on top like that. Rotate that lever around. It has the two contact points and then that pushes and snaps right in. And that's, you know, what's nice about it is one, it's right in the middle. The weight is right there in the middle. Um, it's a pretty heavy car. I definitely, it's about five pounds for sure. Um, and you know, this, this is, uh, rechargeable, but it's not really a DeWalt. It will not work on a DeWalt drill. I tried. It doesn't quite uh, connect the same way. And then it ha comes with a little battery charger. I put stickers on my battery chargers a lot of times now, so I remember what they go to. So a little tip for you. If you have a lot of RC cars and you have a lot of batteries, um, you can put like a um, piece of tape and then write in permanent marker 
what it goes to. So this is 20 volt car. And then it charges in, plugs in like that and charges. So you cannot charge this on a DeWalt uh, charger base, okay? Um, but some other things that are kind of unusual about this car. All right, these are not the original wheels and tires. So in the front is our Radio Shack, uh, type, it's a little loose here actually, uh, these are Radio Shack type tie wheels and um, I got them off of a, a dune buggy that's like 30 years old um, and then this in the back, those are hobby shop wheels and they're little squishy tires and they're, they're really designed like real car tires, uh, they, they have a, a pneumatic, they, they actually are, you know, really squishy and grippy. They grip the ground really well. Um, good traction, nice and fat. And then these allow the car to make, they're very thin and they, they allow the car to make really tight turns. Um, this car also has four wheel independent suspension. So when you push up, you see that here, look. So everything has its own spring for each part of the wheel. And the back wheels are individual. It has a differential. So you spin one, the other one goes in the opposite direction. And it has the dog bones. So you have your, your motor here going to a transmission. It goes out to these those metal dog bones that spin, and then they spin the wheels. And of course, when it's powered, the motor is spinning both wheels in the same direction. It's not that easy to turn. So it's got a, it's, you know, a fair, fairly fast, well, that's why we saw it went like 25 miles an hour. It's a fast vehicle. It's heavy. If you hit this into your ankle, it, you know, it could break your, uh, your leg, your ankle, knock you down. Um, has a nice foam bumper though on the front, which is good. Um, no bumper in the back. So, you know, they're hoping you don't run it into anything. Uh, so really a special car um, for those features. Now, the reason I had to put my own wheels and tires on is because this is what it came with. I saved these. I'm probably never going to use them. They're terrible. But here's what the, it came with. They are rubber, okay, but they're thin. It's, it is a bit of a grippy rubber, but it re they really didn't allow the car to perform very well at all. Um, it wouldn't make tight turns. Uh, it just, it didn't have good stopping. So fortunately I had this extra set of wheels around. I even tried just using these for the front and really the, um, the hobby style wheels that I have are definitely, uh, better. So that's why I went with that. Um, and also it is a 2.4 gig, uh, gigahertz controller. So we have our little tiny antenna and this is your remote, which has no visible antenna. Pistol grip, style, you can adjust the steering. This is your trim, you know, as we discussed in uh, episode three, you can, you know, you can fine tune the steering right in there. It does not uh, have a fine tune for the um, accelerator. So um, one of you, you really just have to, uh, you know, it's set up that it works just fine. Um, what it does have is it has a digitally proportional steering that you might have seen in the video. You know, it can turn gradually and digitally proportional speed where it can go slower and then faster depending on how far you pull the trigger back. Um, it also has a switch on here, training mode and advanced mode to give it the full speed. So, you know, they were really thinking, I got this car uh, probably for, I think it was like $40. It was a hundred and uh, it was a TJ Maxx and I just waited for it, waited and waited and waited for it to get clearance because I figured, you know, I don't think anybody knows, not many people, there weren't many of them around and, and I just figured, I don't think anybody knows how cool this car is. So I'm just gonna wait for, for that to go down um, in price. So that's, um, it's a Mustang. So that's our Mustang body, all right? All right, another car that we saw racing outside was this car here, this Dodge Viper. 
And um, just like the real Dodge Viper, uh, kind of disappointing. Uh, not really as fast as the car looks. Uh, a lot of cars, Corvettes and Porsches, outperform the Viper in real life. Well, this is no different. Um, but this had some neat features. Um, one is when you um, actually, uh, it has a 9.6 volt battery that goes in here and um, it has lights that light up uh, on the wheels. And um, that, that was kind of a neat thing. Um, again, though, uh, it, it did not come with good wheels and tires. So um, I had to do something pretty unique with that. Um, now it has a Lexan body so that if you crash it into stuff, it's, it's pretty durable. Um, but the back wheels um, were a hard plastic and, uh, and the front as well. So it really didn't grip the ground at all. It's, it's fast enough that it would have so much torque that it would just kind of like when you accelerate, it would just move off sideways and crash into something. It, it just really wasn't controllable. And the steering, it would power itself through the steering. So I got these, these wheels. I had just another, sometimes I'll buy broken radio control cars from, you know, a secondhand store and I'll take them apart and I'll save the parts for something. And it turns out that these wheels happen to be able to fit uh, right on the front. Um, and then on the back, what I had is I, I actually, these are the original wheels now, they're two different colors, right? Red and black, and I hate when that happens, but, you know, in this case, I just gave up. Um, I took the tires off of another RC car, and I fit them over the hard plastic that was on these. So that's how I got those tires on here, so it sticks to the ground, at least. Um, this car actually does have a suspension. It has independent suspension in the front, so... You know, you can push that down and, and it's got a different kind. I'm going to show you up close here. All right. So if we look at this car, you see, you have the springs right in front, right? You have this long shaft that goes through here and then you have the armature and you can push that up. Let me show you here. All right. And you push that up and you can see the spring compressing, right? All right. This is another design, it's, it's compact, and it's on some hobby cars. Now this is, this is a $30 car that I probably, I think I got it for $20 or some 15 or something at Home Goods, you know, after the, years ago, probably like 10 years ago, but you know, everything is really cheap after the holidays. And, um, but it had, it is a neat design because it had the hobby style, kind of sedan independent suspension springs in there. So there's a spring up in here and I can push that down and you see the little shaft up there. So it keeps everything tight, you know, kind of like a real car. Um, it doesn't need a lot of room to have a little bit of a spring there. And then in the back, you know, you have your, it's just a single axle that goes all the way through and you have your motor. There's your little motor there, but that motor does a lot of work. It's got a, a, a good, uh, gearing ratio because it's pretty quick for for a cheap inexpensive car and um, this car actually has two speeds it has a gear uh, box on it and you have a lever you see that white lever up in there and you switch that over and that switches to low to high gear and um, the low gear is good for inside the house it's a little bit slower but it has more torque so it can peel out um, so I'm gonna run these things inside and show you um, and we'll also see the little lights that come on uh, under the wheels. So at night, it's kind of cool. You see these blue lights shining through the wheels. Um, so that's our Viper. All right. Now, um, that's a remote for that. This remote, actually, you know, this is the old style remote. Actually, this is the Viper remote. Uh, but because it's uh, 27 megahertz, <clears throat> it can work for several other cars. So this is one of those remotes. You pull the antenna up. And um, I made a custom uh, Lamborghini Countach. This remote can work for that. And it can work for a, a Silverado. I have a big Silverado uh, monster truck. And uh, if I remember correctly, 
I took a, I bought two of those Silverados because they, again, clearance, cheap. Uh, you know, when cheap meets um, worthwhile, <laughs> I can buy, I buy something and then I take it apart. And I believe I bought two of those uh, Silverados and I took the chassis from one. And uh, in one of the episodes, I can't recall right now which one it is, but uh, where GL1, me, is miniaturized and I'm uh, racing around with um, Claudine in the uh, Monster High RC monster truck that I made. The chassis is the same kind of chassis that was that, that HD, that Silverado HD. So, you know, I because I, I know I have the Silverado HD in its original form. So I guess I bought two of them and took one apart. I do these things so often and so many, long ago, I don't always remember exactly. But when I start seeing them, it refreshes my memory. Um, so this car here. I got this car years ago, a uh, secondhand store. Uh, this is a Nico. And... Um, this is one of those cars that was very frustrating. Um, I'm sure the original owner was frustrated with it, and that's why it ended up, uh, I think, at the Goodwill. And um, I, I thought, you know, it's a big vehicle. It's good looking, okay, the Wolf, the Lobos. And um, I thought, well, this will, this will be neat to get this thing running. And it came with a remote. Uh, this is Channel 4. Okay, so what that means, one of the things in electronics with some of these more advanced hobby or almost hobby style cars is they have remotes that have crystals in them. Okay, so the crystals are different frequencies. The, this 27 megahertz can be integrated into the electronics in the remote as well as the car, or sometimes it has a crystal that you can remove. So if you have, you can, you could buy extra crystals. And if you had a car, like this is a channel four car. Okay. Say if the car was channel two and I had a channel two crystal for transmitting and a trans channel two crystal for receiving, they're, they're different. You have to have a transmitter one and a receiving one. But oftentimes the car then would have a place where you can pull the crystal out. Say this is channel four, right? You could pull the channel four out, put in the channel two, and then put in the channel two transmitter crystal in the remote, and then I have a different channel. And why would you do that? Well, let's say I had a friend who had an RC vehicle and their car was on channel six, and this was an original, well, channel four, right? And this was a channel four, and we wanted to race each other, but I had extra crystals. I could pull my crystals out, change them, and then we could race and we wouldn't interfere with each other. That's why. That's the difference, the 2.4 gigahertz frequencies that you now get the, the remote lines up exactly with the car and it, and it won't interfere with anything else because there's so many frequencies out there in that gigahertz range that it's specific to that vehicle. Downside, lose the remote, car doesn't work, there's no crystal, it's integrated into the electronics, so now the car is just parts. Um, you know, you could buy a whole other set of electronics and change it, but that's like $50, $60 venture and then you have to take stuff apart. And I've done it, but, you know, it's, it's uh, a lot of times it's like, why bother? Um, so this has a crystal. So you would pull that off. You could pull this out and see. Ah, there you go. So take a look at this. So there's your label. And then underneath, see the pins? So the pins, and you can see, you see that metal thing in there? That's the crystals inside there. So that connects right into here. Push that down. It makes contact. And now the remote's ready to go. When I got this car, this car runs on a 9.6 volt battery. So let me show you that here. Now this is a 2000 milliamp 9.6 volt battery nickel metal hydride, okay, versus nickel cadmium. So the first um, 9.6 volt batteries that you would get, okay, that's this design, it's eight batteries. They're 1.25, they're the size of double A's, but uh, well, 
if they're nickel cadmium, they're 1.25 volts. If they're nickel metal hydride, they could be 1.4, maybe 1.5, um, maybe even 1.25. But they, they could be a little higher voltage when they're nickel metal hydride, uh, different technology. But nickel cadmium, 9 volt, 9.6 volt batteries, uh, started out at somewhere around 5 to 600 milliamps. Okay, that's nickel cadmium. Nickel metal, uh, you might get a nickel cadmium that's uh, 900 milliamps. As, as the years went on, the technology got better and they could, you know, put, pack more cells into those batteries. But nickel metal hydride, they could get the same size battery, 2000 milliamps. So more than three times as, as much capacity as the original one. So that means the car will run three times longer. Now, the, the only issue with that is if the car wasn't designed to run that long, it can overheat and damage the electronics. So sometimes I've had cars where I, I run them less time than the battery. So the battery still had capacity, but I shut the car off because I know the car was designed at a time when those batteries didn't even exist. You also, even if the battery is the same voltage, but it's a higher current, it can deliver that current more consistently. And, and so you can actually get more speed, even though the voltage is the same. Now, remember voltage is, is how many, how fast all the little, let's see, remember the people metaphor, 2000 people running through these, the, these tubes here, right? We use people. We say it's, it's a conduit. It's, it's like a, uh, you know, I don't know, like a bridge, right? They're running through a tunnel. They're running through a tunnel. You have 2,000 people running through a tunnel versus one that has 600 people running through a tunnel. That's 600 milliamps. So you have 2,000 people running through, um, but they're running more consistently. When, when you have a technology like nickel cadmium, not only is it lower uh, in, in milliamps, like how, how long it will run, but the, the power, there's a fluctuation to the power, a little higher, a little lower, um, something like this with 2000 milliamps, it might have a little bit higher and lower, but it's not going to be that much of a variation because there's just so many, you know, electrons, people running through the tunnel. So your car is going to actually perform better, uh, that way. So sometimes it's just, it behooves you to get a battery that's got more milliamps because even if it's the same voltage, uh, you'll get better performance and you'll get more power when you need it, like if the car is going up a hill or something like that. Now, this was an interesting choice for this vehicle. This, this car is like 30 years, almost 30 years old, okay? And it, and it came with the, uh, it was made at a time when there were not 2,000 milliamp batteries. There was like 600, 900, okay? It's heavy. This, this car is maybe seven pounds, okay? Um, as a weightlifter, I'm very good at picking something up and knowing how heavy it is, especially with the battery in the car, okay? It's got big tires, big heavy wheels. In fact, look at the wheels, not even hollow. It has this solid plastic in there. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's just a heavy vehicle. The battery, the 9.6 volt battery that came with it didn't last long at all because it's, you know, six to 900 milliamps big heavy vehicle uh it's going to slow down pretty quickly and stop working pretty quickly i don't know who designed this car who you know because even back then when they came out with a car this big and heavy it came with one of those big 7.2 volt batteries that i showed you and you know in episode three uh you know class three and it would have just a lot more capacity with the mini c's to, to power this car so i don't know i feel like they made this car and then they were like oh this doesn't work really well, but uh, well, let's go with it. I, I really don't know what the thinking was. But with the 2000 amp hour battery, it, it definitely runs a lot better and, and long enough to, you know, maybe 15 minutes or so. So, you know, at least you have some fun with it. Um, also, when I got this car, I think the reason why it was uh, sent to Goodwill is that the remote um, was on opposite day. So when you hit the, when you pulled to accelerate, it went in reverse. And when you went to turn it the direction that you thought it should turn in, it went the opposite. So I had to go into the car 
and actually switched, cut the wires and swapped them the other way. So the positive and negatives would be opposite because this didn't come. Uh, remember I told you on the more sophisticated remotes, you could actually hit a switch and switch, switch it so that it would do that automatically. But this, this car is a weird conglomerate of sophisticated technology and not sophisticated. And I don't know what they were thinking. It's those three things together. So they obviously made a mistake uh, somewhere in, the, in produ producing this car where it would do opposite. And I cut the positive and negative on the motor and a positive and negative on the steering servo. And I was able to swap them so that it worked correctly. Um, so that was a thing as well. Now, um, another thing I, uh, I like about this car is it has some uh, heavy duty features. And again, it's, that's probably why it's so heavy. Um, this in here, where the wheel connects, the wheel hub, uh, that's metal. Okay, so it has a metal. See, you can see in there, this is metal. All right. And that's where the steering rod connects. And see that steering rod? It's a spring. So if you are, if you, if it runs into something, it bends the steering rod without breaking it. So um, the interesting thing, it's got enough strength to turn the wheel. But if I try to turn it manually, you see how the other one doesn't turn because the spring gives. And, you know, as I've shown you with the other cars, if I, if I turn them, they both turn together. But this spring alleviates that. Now, they were probably thinking, well, the car is heavy. And if, it, if it's a, a kid running this car and it runs into something and hits the wheel, it won't break. You know, and that's true. The thing is, is as you might have seen outside, it's kind of slow. So it probably wouldn't break anyway because it's just kind of slow. So that's where it's it's interesting. It has these features like, okay, heavy duty metal part. Uh, you have a steering rod that's a spring. Uh, the car's heavy. So if it were a fast car and it ran into a curb with the wheel, yeah, it might break, but it's not that fast. Also, this car is digitally proportional. So it has the slow steering and the, and the adjustable speed in the remote control. It even has a, a differential here so, you know, so the outside wheel spins faster than the inside wheel when you're going around turn, turns. So it's all these sophisticated parts that were on RC vehicles at the time that cost like $130, $150. But those came with the big battery. They went twice as fast. Um, and they were even a little, they were lighter and maybe even a little smaller than this. But somebody, I think this was a pet project that someone's like, oh, I'm just guessing. But they're like, I made this car, I love it, I want to have all these features on it, but actually it doesn't perform that well. I, I have kept it, uh, you know, it has the springs and suspension and everything, just like a, an expensive kind of hobbyish car. Um, I've kept it just simply, really, to be able to, to talk about it. I, I wasn't necessarily talking about it to, to you guys, but just to have it as a showpiece to say, look at this weird mix of things that somebody made. So um, there you go. This is made by Nico, one of my favorite RC car companies that made cars for Radio Shack and Toys R Us. Uh, sold a lot of vehicles through that. So, all right. So that's this guy here. Put that back. I see. This is. All right. There we go. All right. Now, the next unusual vehicle I want to show you is that skateboard. Now, here's another vehicle. This was a $60 vehicle that I got for $15 clearance. Um, it came out. No one liked it, I guess. No one loved it. It just sat there on the shelf, sat there and sat there and sat there for $60. Nobody bought it. It ended up even in big lots. So it went from like Toys R Us to big lots. I remember there was like a big stack of them, you know, and, and nobody was buying it. I got it. I think at big lots, it was still like 30 bucks. And I got it for 15, probably, I think when Toys R Us was going under. And I go, well, you know, I'm going to buy this thing. I'm going to take it apart. Uh, and, and I'm going to use the chassis for something else. Well, I decided not to because it's really a great vehicle. Um, I thought I wouldn't like the skateboard thing because it's not really a car. Uh, but I was wrong. It's really neat. Um, so let me go through 
what this thing does. First of all, it goes 14 miles an hour. So that's really fast, especially for something that you get for $15. But even 60, uh, that's pretty fast. Um, and they're not lying about the speed. I mean, it really is that speed. And it's digitally proportional speed control. So again, you can go really slow uh, or you can go fast. The steering is not digitally proportional. It just does one thing, all the way to the left or all the way to the right. Okay, so that's, that's all right. So it's not that sophisticated. And I think one of the reasons why they didn't care is because if it flips over, which is hard to get to flip over, but if you do a lot of tricks and jumps with it and it flips over, it rolls on this and it will roll back up onto its, up onto its wheels uh, quite well. And I was trying to get it to flip over, but I couldn't even get it to flip over. But I've done it before, and, um, and it, it does a really nice job of getting back up on its wheels. It's got um, springs in the back, but independent suspension springs in the front. See that? I like these. I like it also when the springs are kind of at an angle like a real monster truck. I think that's neat. The tires are really grippy. They're real soft. Uh, they feel like they might have foam inside. I think they do because they because they don't make like an air sound and they spring back a little bit harder than if they were just completely hollow. So that would be a kind of a sophisticated thing on more expensive hobby cars. They put like a foam inside. Uh, I think this has that. You could take the wheels off. It has a, a little hub, nut hub that, you know, you can use the tool, take the wheels off, and I don't know, maybe you could get another wheel set on there. Sometimes you can do that, sometimes you can't. Um, it's see-through, it's clear, so clear plastic, so you can actually see the wheels rotating, and you can see uh, the motor over there. Uh, good size motor, I think that's an RS360 or RS380, which is a pretty big motor. So they sort of go like, um, you know, 240, 360, 380, 540. So 540 is significant, like on that big car, on the first car, the Mustang, that has a big old 540 in it. Uh, but this is a pretty big motor, and that's why it goes fast. Um, it has uh, a battery in here. It has a 8.4-volt uh, battery that you don't take the battery out to charge up. It has a switch here. You put it over on charge, and then it has a USB port, and... It comes with a USB uh, special wire to boost up. Now, remember, when you get a, a USB charger for your, your cell phone, it's 5.4 volts. You can put, if I remember correctly, it's a bridge rectifier in there to make, or no, actually, a bridge rectifier, I think, changes AC to DC. So when you have AC current in your house and you want to convert it to DC, that's a bridge rectifier. But you can have a transformer that will transform, let's say, 5.4 volts inside this the wire. They have, I don't think I have one right here. Uh, yeah, it's, I'll, I'll show you later. Um, so it has a, some electronics in there and a boost the voltage up to, so it can charge the 8.4 volt battery on that. So, um, you know, and it's it's squishy, you know, it, 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 it's nice and springy. So kind of a neat vehicle. Uh, you know, you have your pistol grip remote. And uh, like I said, digitally proportional speed control, but not steering. All right. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you here before we go is this vehicle. Remember this one? Okay, from show number three. I took the body off of it, right? So it was like that. All right. So, you know, 27 megahertz, you have your antenna, long antenna. And this is the battery pack that I strapped down to the vehicle. And the motor is on the side. Very high performance, small motor, okay? So it, it just has a lot of windings in it. But what I want you to take a look at is the suspension on here. So you have the trailing arms that give it this stability. You have the long axle, but you have, like, the way the wheels work. They, they, they work opposite each other. They're not independent. So it's for rock. It's a rock climbing type of suspension with the long throw arms. Like it has a lot of play. It can, they can really go pretty up high from the plane. Okay. 
good dampening. You can drop it. It doesn't leave the ground too much. So it's, it's like a rock climbing design. And we're going to see how that works, how that is like an actual rock climbing RC vehicle. This is a rock climbing RC vehicle. Now, Tuesday morning, got this Tuesday morning for $60. It was originally double the price. Um, and this is made by Bandai, the people that make um, Power Ranger toys. One of the things they're famous for. So uh, this is, in some ways, the best RC vehicle I have. Um, I have more expensive ones and more sophisticated and stuff like that. But in terms of all the things this thing can do, it's it's really an incredible value. Um, it runs on a 9.6 volt battery, and uh, what's neat about the way that it goes in, very efficient. There's, they try to really keep the weight down on this vehicle. So it doesn't even have a plastic cover over the battery. It just, it goes in and in order to hold the battery down, it has just this, this little strip of plastic here that just snaps in and that you have the, the battery fits in under like a sleeve here and then snaps over top of the battery here and holds the battery. You don't have a, you don't even have a full piece of plastic covering it. And the good thing about that is it also keeps the battery uh, cooler. So the battery is exposed to the air and can cool itself off because, again, if the battery is doing a lot of work, it also heats up just like the motors. Okay, so this has a similar suspension. You have the long axle. You have your trailing arms. And then it, it has a lot of play off of the horizontal plane you can go up a lot just like the other vehicle. A little bit more in this because it actually is a rock climbing vehicle, but that's, it's, it's really the same design. So you can, you know, squash down, okay? Now, here's what's good about this. Uh, a number of things. Most sticky rubber of any RC car I have. So uh, if you ever look at those John Deere toys that uh, they're, not RC, they're not radio controlled, but they're like for little kids and they have like old tractors and stuff and that sticky, sticky rubber on those John Deere toys. Same rubber here, which is a fantastic idea because those it really needs to grab the rocks and pull itself up. Um, it has a difference in how its motors hooked up. So this is one motor on the side here with a drive shaft inside. The, the gearing is up in here. You have motor gearing drive shaft to the uh, to the front and drive shaft to the back and and they there's a slipping gear in here so they can move independently but if you if you move one side together now you can get the other side to move so then it engages like a differential gear okay so you can move it individually and then it just does the you know the differential that's inside this part of it and it doesn't engage the front and then you twist it here and now it engages the front and back together and engages the differential gear pretty sophisticated this is what you see commonly in a lot of rock climbing vehicles that are less sophisticated but in a lot of ways it doesn't really matter um, depending on what you're doing with it it's, it's really good enough um, what you have isn't you you have stabilizing arms here you don't have a drive shaft because the it doesn't have a motor that's up in the chassis here okay just the battery and electronics and all this is is just another stabilizing arm no drive shaft it doesn't need a drive shaft because it has a motor inside this axle and it has a separate motor inside this axle so the front and back each have their own motor each separately Okay, kind of like a Tesla, right? You have the front motor and the back motor. Um, you have, it's, it's, it has a differential gear and you can see that the, the other wheel moves. Now, uh, it's, it, it's very tight. It moves it together. Um, oh, actually, you know what? I don't think this does have a differential gear. Let's, let's try something. I'm gonna show you something. This has two speeds. It has a gearbox for each motor in the front and the back. 
And right now it's in low gear, so it's so tight that it, it will not disengage. So let's see if I put it, if I put it in the middle, okay, they move both at the same time. Okay, so it actually has no differential, which is actually good for rock climbing. So both wheels, because it can go very slow, and they both pull along at the same time. Remember, the differential gear is so that when you go around a turn, it slips. The, the inner wheel moves slower than the outer wheel, which is advantageous when you're going fast and you don't want to tear the tire up. But when you're going up rocks, you want equal power to both wheels all the time. Uh, so you don't really, a differential gear, if what happens is, is the wheel that starts slipping is the one that gets all the power. It's kind of ironic because the wheel that's caught, you'd want that wheel to actually get the power to get yourself out of a jam. Like, let's say you're, you're driving a real car and you're, you get it in mud or snow. And have you seen it where like, you, you know, you're hitting the accelerator and the wheel that's actually in the dirt is the one or the mud in the snow is the one spinning, which isn't helping you in any way other than burying the car further. It's, it's digging itself deeper. It, you think to yourself, wouldn't it be great if the other wheel was equal and then you could kind of pull that one is actually sticking to the ground better? Well, yeah, that's the downside of a slip, the limited slip differential is that it, it does that and it's not good for off road better to have, uh, if I remember correctly, it's called posi traction, where both wheels go together at the same time. And, uh, and that way it can really push itself out of a jam. Now, um, the long throw to be able to go up like that, obviously to be able to, you know, take something like this and it can, it can you can see how twisty it is, right? So that way all the, the tires are in contact with the ground the whole time. And here's another thing that's really a neat concept with this. There's foam inside the tires, but the foam in the back is lighter than the foam in the front. So the front wheels, tires, are heavier than the back. And the reason for that is if it's going up a rock, going up a hill, and you're getting to the top, you want the, the front tires, wouldn't it be great if they were heavier and then they could you know, push down more to pull the rest of the vehicle up over the hill? That's why, and this has that. So really for $120 or even 60, what I got it for, fantastic. Uh, because if you go and you get, you know, little rock climbing vehicles that, that you get at, you know, uh, Walmart or Target or something, they don't have all that. Um, this, is, this is really like a hobby grade vehicle. And the fact that it has the, the switch uh, for the low and high gear, it actually goes about 11, 12 miles an hour in high gear. Um, and you know, maybe like, uh, four to six miles an hour in, sl in low gear, but, uh, that's what you want. Cause it's a lot of torque that I mean, can really climb a pretty steep hill in low gear. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to, you know, that's just, what do you, what more do you want with the rock climbing vehicle? Um, you have a nice Lexan body, very light. Um, so that's, that's that, uh, my rock climbing vehicle. So. I'm going to shoot some video of this vehicle going over some stuff, and uh, I'm going to show you that at the end. So uh, thanks for watching class number four, and uh, you're going to see some of that video coming right up. All right, so here's my rock climbing truck in low gear. really hard to hold the camera and shoot the vehicle at the same time but see how it's got the digitally proportional speed control so I can go really slow if I want and then I can you know real slow and then go fa faster and that's in low gear so really nothing it's it's quite unstoppable in low gear goes up that rock and then down the rock you see how the suspension shifts so that's really neat now I'm gonna put it in high gear and race it around a little bit show you the difference
All right, here we go in high gear. They can see significantly faster. All right, and the last thing I'm gonna show you here that I forgot to have on the table is the transformer wire to charge up the skateboard. So this is the USB wire, but you can see that it has, it's actually got some extended space in here for the electronics that actually change the voltage so it can charge up a uh, 8.4 volt battery instead of a 5.4 volt battery that you have in your cell phones. All right, so that's gonna be it for this show. I have a lot more coming up soon. Thanks for watching. And here you go, the fancy blue lights on the inside of the wheels on the Dodge Viper.